ancient travellers left behind their golden travel accounts in the form of travelogues for the future generations to read, learn and delight. We bring those to you in our audio series, Travelogues in Time. In today's edition, we have the third part of the travel accounts of Francois Bernier, the French doctor who visited India in the 17th century. In the first two parts, you heard a short biographical sketch of Francois Bernier, his early life and education, and the various destinations of his remarkable journey. He arrived in India in the 17th century when the war of succession amongst the Mughal princes was raging. Barnier's explanation of writing an exotic historical narrative and dedicating it to the king of France Louis XIV and also Barnier's journey within India and his observations regarding socio-cultural matters. The script and presentation is by Farhat Nasreen, Professor of History at Jamia Millia Islamia. Over to Farhat Nasreen. Fortunately, Barnier spent time in some of the most vibrant urban centers of medieval India like Surat, Delhi, Agra and Lahore. He also visited Kashmir, Bengal, Masuli Patam and Golconda. His observations in the place-people context are absolutely priceless. Barnier called Kashmir the paradise of the Indies. He compared the cities of Agra and Delhi. He says that the former was founded by Akbar and housed most of the grandees of his court. The river Yamuna flowed by the city. The mansions built in this city were perhaps matchless. Bernier's description of the Taj Mahal is worth citing. He says that one could never be tired of looking at it. It is totally faultless and mesmerizing. He notes that when he visited it with a French merchant, perhaps Tavernier, the latter commented that he had seen nothing so bold and majestic in Europe. According to him, Delhi was a better planned city than Agra. It was enclosed by a wall which provided extra protection to the city. The streets were uniform, wide and well planned. He mentions that fruits like melons, apples, pears and grapes were readily available in Delhi, but they were quite expensive. Dried fruits, almonds, pistachios, plums, apricots and raisins were also very popular. He says that there are many confectionery shops but the sweetmeats are badly made and are full of dust and flies. He opines that eating homemade food is clearly the best option. He warns that although meat is sold in every part of the city, one must eat it with caution. It is possible that the sellers might sell the meat of camels, horses or perhaps oxen which might have died of disease. He complains that although there are many bakers in the city, their bread is not well baked. He elaborates that the rich bake bread at home in which they add fresh butter, eggs and milk etc. However, Bernier didn't find that to be very delicious. He praises the shops inside the Red Fort where the quality of products was relatively better. His description of Aurangzeb's court culture is detailed. He notices that in tandem with world phenomena, in India too, eunuchs were highly trusted as personal bodyguards of the monarchs. He writes that they flapped away flies with peacock tails and operated a large fan. Quite a few of them were posted in the royal court and they humbly waited for some task to be assigned to them. He records that elephants were trained to bend one knee and lift their trunks high and roar loudly as a mark of reverence to the monarch. Another interesting observation of Bernier is that Indians are very fond of jewellery. Thus, large quantities of silver and gold were hoarded as jewels. He praises Indian gold ornaments and says that he doubts whether any European goldsmith would be able to copy them. He says that the Indian artisans work with poor quality tools and have hardly any formal training, yet they are very efficient at replicating articles of European manufacture. In fact, they imitate with such finesse that one cannot differentiate between the original and the copy. He also praises the Indian painters, embroiders and tailors, etc. 
Amongst the local practices that he found shocking was widow immolation. He had witnessed a 12 years old girl being burned alive over her dead husband's pyre. He also claims to have witnessed other ways of getting rid of widows. He writes about various kinds of religious mendicants like jogis, fakirs and darveshes. The kind of atrocities that they inflicted upon themselves surprised Bernier. And equally surprising was the kind of sway they held on the locals' minds. He compared medieval India's medical practices with those of Europe. He states that some of the basic principles were that a patient with fever was to abstain from food in general and meat in particular. Patients were sometimes bled to get rid of bacterial infections. Sometimes the intentional curative bleeding was so intense that the patients fainted. He claimed that the Europeans have far greater knowledge of anatomy in comparison to Indians. You just heard the third part of the travel accounts of Francois Bernier, the French doctor who visited India in the 17th century. The script and presentation was by Farhat Nasreen, professor of history at Jami Mil Islamia. Travelogues in time. Travelogues in time.